On Thursday, the Russian president raised the stakes in a State of the Nation address. Should the world be concerned about his threats? Welcome everyone in today's video. We're going to tell you Putin brutal warning to NATO has Macron in panic. President Vladimir Putin has threatened to use nuclear weapons if Western powers deploy troops within striking distance of Russia. But before we proceed the further video, if you're new to this channel, remember, go ahead and to hit the bell icon to subscribe so you won't miss the informative videos we will upload in the future. His statements in a State of the Nation address on Thursday were similar to those of Dmitry Medvedev, a Putin supporter who served as Russia's president from 2008 to 2012 and prime minister until becoming a top security official in 2020. Throughout the Ukraine conflict, Medvedev has threatened nuclear war and written several social media postings hurling obscenities and threats at Western leaders and states. Putin has now upped the ante, replying to French President Emmanuel Macron's assertion on Monday that the deployment of European troops to Ukraine cannot be ruled out. Putin made his warnings at his annual national address, which was carefully choreographed and televised live, resulting in sound bites and quotes that Russian media would likely repeat and remark on for days. The West has announced the possibility of sending Western military contingents to Ukraine. Putin stated on Thursday, the consequences for potential interventionists will be far more tragic. They should finally know, we have weapons capable of hitting targets on their land. Everything. The West comes up with raises the genuine threat of a battle involving the use of nuclear weapons, and thus the downfall of civilization, he stated. Moscow boasts the world's largest nuclear arsenal, which includes a new generation of hypersonic missiles and several times more tactical nuclear warheads than the entire Western world. Now it is Putin who clearly draws a red line about using the nukes, Kush said, adding that Macron had pressed Putin on when Moscow would be prepared to launch the nukes. Nothing new. Boris Bondarev, a senior Russian diplomat who abandoned his position to oppose Moscow's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, saw nothing new in Putin's ominous speech. The warnings were Putin's usual scares and a projection of his own unrealized desires on the West. According to Bondarev, who worked in the United Nations headquarters in Geneva until 2022, this was not the first time Moscow had shown its teeth in a fight with the US and Europe. Nikita Khrushchev, the Soviet leader, beat his shoe on the stage at the United Nations headquarters in New York in 1960, raving about toady American imperialism and promised further interventions. Two years later, Khrushchev instigated the Caribbean Missile Crisis, which almost resulted in a nuclear holocaust. Soviet authorities in the late 1970s and early 1980s constantly hinted at the danger of nuclear war until Mikhail Gorbachev initiated his perestroika reforms, which elicited comfort in the West but buried the USSR. During the Ukraine conflict, the Kremlin unilaterally terminated nuclear weapons limitation accords with Washington, sparking fears of a new arms race. This is not a bluff. Putin stated in 2022, announcing the potential of a nuclear strike. Putin's regime has never used the threat of nuclear war to scare the West into not providing military aid to Ukraine. Alisher Ilkhamov, chairman of Central Asia Due Diligence, a research tank in London, told Al Jazeera. In the past, the scare was usually voiced over by Medvedev and all sorts of propagandists. Now it's Putin's turn to announce them, he told reporters. And it wasn't Macron's assumption that irritated Putin, but rather Ukraine's success in attacking airfields, fuel depots, warships, and combat planes deep within Russia and Russia-occupied territories, according to Ilkhamov. So far, the West has been able to raise the stakes by giving Ukraine with increasingly effective weapons while ignoring the Kremlin's warnings, he added. And Putin will avoid a frontal confrontation with NATO because Russia's military-industrial might is too depleted to support an all-out war. He claims, The power of sides are too unequal, Ilkhamov explained. Putin has nothing to rely on in his fight with the West. He understands that extremely well and will not go beyond the scares. The widow of Russia's most outspoken opposition leader provided valuable insight into how Putin issues threats and follows through on them. You aren't dealing with a politician 
but with a bloody monster. Putin is the leader of an organized criminal organization, Yulia Navalny, whose husband Alexei Navalny died on February 16 in an Arctic prison, said in a video on Wednesday. It is difficult to injure Putin with yet another resolution or set of penalties that are identical to the ones that came before. You can't win him over by assuming he has principles, morals, and rules," she remarked. During his speech, Putin appeared to deny his own role in the war, which is now in its third year. I noticed during Putin's speech that he said Russia did not start the war. Ivar Dale, a senior policy advisor at the Norwegian Helsinki Committee, a human rights organization, told Al Jazeera. He considered the risks, chose to try it, and failed. The right thing to do now is to withdraw all troops from Ukraine and stop threatening innocent people with nuclear holocaust," Dale stated. Putin's blackmail is not his first, and it will most likely not be his last, and the West should send NATO soldiers to help Ukraine, according to an Eastern Europe expert. The emergence of Western servicemen in Ukraine will, of course, cross yet another red line. Nikolai Mitrokin of Bremen University, Germany, told Al Jazeera. Although it would very much help Ukraine and give it a chance to free several brigades that are currently guarding the rear and the border with a breakaway and pro-Russian Moldovan region of Transnistria. Russia warns of direct conflict with NATO. If troops from alliance members fight in Ukraine, the Kremlin has warned Kyiv's European allies that sending troops to fight in Ukraine would lead to the inevitability of war between Russia and NATO following France's statement that, despite a current lack of consensus, nothing, including sending Western forces to fight on the Ukrainian side, should be ruled out in terms of preventing a Russian victory in Ukraine. Following a summit of continental leaders in Paris on February 26, French President Emmanuel Macron stated that there was a broad consensus to do more and faster for Ukraine, with participants agreeing to form a coalition to provide Ukraine with medium and long-range missiles and bombs to support Kyiv's efforts to repel Russia's invasion. Macron told a news conference that there was no consensus on sending European ground soldiers to Ukraine, but that nothing should be excluded in order to achieve our objective. Russia cannot win that war. When asked about Macron's remark, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov responded on February 27 that the very fact of discussing the possibility of sending certain contingents to Ukraine from NATO countries is a very important new element. The United States has stated that it has no plans to send ground troops to Ukraine, while Germany, the United Kingdom, Spain, Poland, and the Czech Republic have all denied any involvement in the conflict. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, who attended the Paris meeting, told journalists that the Allies have decided that there will be no soldiers on Ukrainian soil sent there by European or NATO states. In Prague, Czech Prime Minister Peter Fiala and his visiting Polish counterpart, Donald Tusk, denied that their governments were considering such a move. I am convinced that we should develop the paths of support that we embarked on after Russia's aggression. Fiala told a news conference alongside Tusk. I believe we don't need to open some other methods or ways, he went on to say. Poland does not plan to send its troops to the territory of Ukraine, Tusk stated in a statement. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg told the Associated Press on February 27 that NATO allies are providing unprecedented support to Ukraine, but there are no plans for NATO combat troops on the ground in Ukraine. French Foreign Minister Stephanie Sojourn sought to explain Macron's words, saying the president intended to send troops for specific missions like as mine clearance, on-site weapon production, and cyber protection. This may necessitate a military presence without crossing the threshold of fighting, Sojourn told French legislators. Zelensky, who spoke virtually at the Paris gathering, urged European leaders to ensure that Russian President Vladimir Putin cannot destroy our achievements and expand his aggression to other nations. Ukraine relies significantly on advanced weaponry and ammunition supplies from its Western allies, namely the United States, to withstand increasingly fierce assaults by Russian forces with superior manpower and a plentiful supply of ammunition. 
Outgunned and outmanned Ukrainian troops were recently forced to retreat from some of their eastern defensive positions, as a key $61 billion military aid plan from the United States remained delayed in the Republican-controlled House of Representatives. United States President Joe Biden convened a conference of key congressional leaders at the White House, warning of the catastrophic consequences of failing to provide Ukraine with military aid. The encounter boosted his efforts to unlock the blocked help and avert a government shutdown as the March 1 deadline for an appropriations bill approach. On Ukraine, I think the need is urgent, said Biden, who was accompanied in the meeting by Vice President Kamala Harris. Indeed, the consequence of inaction every day in Ukraine is dire, he went on to say. That's all for today's video. House Speaker Mike Johnson, a friend of us President Donald Trump, who controls a razor-thin Republican majority in the House, has refused to allow a vote on the measure including the extra aid to Ukraine. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos from our channel. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.